Welcome everybody to another pure variant deck build. Today I have my one of my all-time favorite archetypes. It is the Charmer slash Familiar Possessed archetype. This is immensely fun. It is not great, I will preface. I haven't solved the terrible archetype of Charmer slash Familiar Possessed. It's still bad, but I've made a build that is A, immensely, immensely fun, and uh, B, I kind of feel like it brings out something unique. A lot of people have tried doing variations of this. They throw in a bunch of hand traps. Um, they kind of make it something that I think strays away a bit too much from it. But there's only so far you can stray away from this archetype anyway, because it is inherently not great. Uh, but I have done two deck builds on this previously. You guys have shown a lot of love. If you guys have watched any of those previous deck builds, you'll kind of know what to expect. Uh, nothing but Charmer Monsters in the extra deck and no hand traps in the main deck. We're trying to keep it as pure as possible, to keep it exciting and to bring out the most of the familiar possessed slash charmer archetype. The build I've done is control. And I know the beauty of familiar possessed and, and the structure deck in general uh, that came out not too long ago, kind of allows you to swing and kind of OTK if you can get monsters on the board. I feel like the build I've got excels at control. I've done a very unique variation of control. And I feel like it's immensely fun. Um, when it's going right and things are clicking, there are very few decks that I feel are as fun for me personally to play. So without further talking, let me get into the main deck because that's where all the fun is. So because I want to keep this as pure as possible and as fun as possible, I run two copies of Familiar Possessed Area, two copies of Familiar Possessed Win, two copies of Familiar Possessed Heater, two copies of Familiar Possessed Alsa, Two copies of Familiar Possessed Dark, one copy of Familiar Possessed Liner, and one copy of Fairy Tale Luna. Um, the reason is we want to see as many attributes on the field as possible for the attack boost, which I'll get to uh, shortly with the spells. Uh, but these are the monsters in the deck. Like I said, no hand traps, but this is a very, very fun build for casual competitive uh, environments. So two copies of each, I found the sweet spot. We don't want to run three because we don't want to have multiple of the same attributes in our opening hand. Um, most people like to run multiple of Luna, and I think you absolutely can. You can drop down the liner and run multiple Lunas because uh, Luna is a light as well, 1850 attack. It's somewhat of a pseudo familiar possessed monster, which is kind of neat. The reason I run Lion is because it feels a bit more in theme, uh, but if you're wanting to beef it up a little bit, drop the liner, add another fairy tale Luna, because Luna will search any of the other attributes. It's uh, quite good. Luna is very, very good. The only issue is she only she has a thousand defense instead of 1500, so she doesn't work in complete unison, but she works well enough that she's definitely worth at least running one. Um, the other monster effects, all the familiar possessed monsters on the field do absolutely nothing. They are vanilla. We want them to get as big as possible and abuse the fact that they are spellcaster monsters. Um, that is the build I'm going for. So like I said, if you want to beef just this selection up, drop the liner, add multiple lunars because Luna is just a great card to have. But if you're happy, you know, you can actually drop the Luna and add an additional liner if you want, if you want to keep it pure as pure can be but this is the variation that I have a lot of fun with. And I think two of each attribute is absolutely the sweet spot to have. Now into the spells, I run a playset of Spirit Charmers. This is one of the best searches in the game for an in archetype. Discard one, search a familiar possessed uh, slash possessed spell or trap card, whatever, and then set an additional one. So discard one and essentially search two or search one, set one. Very, very good. We want to run this at three because it adds immense consistency and potential setup for an interruption next turn. We run a playset of Awakening of the Possessed. This is my favorite card in the deck. Um, all our monsters will gain 300 attack for each different attribute on the field. So if we control one Awakening of the Possessed and we have one uh, Familiar Possessed area, it will automatically gain 300. Even though there's not different attributes, it's still a unique attribute. So it will automatically bump to 2150. The reason I run multiple uh, is because of the insane attack boost. If we have two or three, if we have two of these, the attack boost will stack. So area by itself will gain 600. With a third, it'll gain 900. So all of a sudden it's 2750 if we've got all three. Not likely all the time, because we don't always want to search it or we don't always open it. Um, but it's an insane attack boost, because the moment we open another attribute like win, if we only have one, 
These are gaining 600, which is already pretty good for generic monsters, which are kind of vanilla. They go to 2450. We have two of these, all of a sudden they're gaining 1200 because these will stack. And all of a sudden we're at 3050. We control three, these are gaining 900 each. Um, sorry, uh, uh, 900 here, 900 here, so 1800, so it would be 3650. Uh, absolutely insane. There are not many monsters that can uh, get above uh, 3,500. There are, you know, quite a bit you can access, but in terms of just summoning a generic kind of vanilla monster, very, very powerful. Awakening of Possessed protects all of our familiar Possessed monsters from being destroyed by card effect, so Ragekis won't do anything. And uh, each time we would summon a spellcaster with 1850 attack, we draw a card. The draw card doesn't stack, only the attack boost does, but still getting a draw off every summon gives us hand advantage, which we absolutely want. So that is the reason I run three Awakening of the Possessed, because I love the attack boost stat. Considering our monsters do anything, and our opponent tends to underestimate the power of this card, uh, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal card to have. We run a playset of Pot of Duality. Uh, we don't special summon often in this deck, especially going first. We don't have the ability to special summon. We just want to dig for the cards that we need. We have the Searcher in Spirit Charmers. We have a Searcher in Pot of Duality, well, Semi Searcher. Um, I absolutely love this. This is perfect for the build that I'm playing because I don't care about special summoning. I just want to be able to dig for the cards that I need and kind of make the most of how janky this uh, archetype is at its core. Three copies of Secret Village of the Spellcasters. So every monster in our main deck and extra deck are Spellcaster monsters, even Luna. Um, and because we're not special summoning, it can put us behind quite easily. Secret Village of the Spellcasters is phenomenal because it locks our opponent out of spells completely unless they control a Spellcaster monster. And with Awakening of the Possessed, us uh, allowing to have protection for our familiar possessed charmer monsters, they can't be destroyed by card effects. So unless they're beating over very beefy familiar possessed monsters, which can get to 3k very easy, uh, without activating spells and without destroying them by card effects, Secret Village of these spellcasters is one of the best floodgates to run in this variation. I love running it at three. I always want to see it in my opening hand going first because I absolutely want to go first. Next, I run two copies of Pot of Extravagance, um, and I'll get into why I'm running two, but I'm essentially just running, you know, almost play sets of all the Charmer uh, Link monsters, and I don't care about summoning them. It doesn't matter if we get rid of any of them. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, depending on the matchup. I'm using them as Banish Fodder to draw as much as possible. So two Pot of Extravagance, I think it runs perfectly in this deck. One copy of Twin Twisters, just in case, um, if we can't... Um, you know, if we, we struggle depending on the matchup, if there's Alter Geist, for example, they have a lot of traps. Um, any back row heavy deck, one Twin Twisters is always going to be a very powerful card. So I run it, but you can tech it out for a hand trap if you need. For the traps, I run a playset of Possessed Partnerships. This is another one of my favorite cards in the archetype. Allows us to special summon a spell cast with 1500 defense from our hand or graveyard. So it's every monster we have except Luna because she has 1000 defense. Uh, but it's just, yeah, special summon in our opponent's turn. And then if we control monsters with at least two different attributes, we can destroy a card on the field. So not only does it work in multiple ways, and I'll just show you quickly why I love this card. So say we have area on the field and we already have Awakening of the Possessed. Um, if we activate the Possessed Partnerships and we go to special summon uh, win, win... We'll also have two different attributes, so we'll get a pop on Possessed Partnerships, but we'll also get to draw a card with Awakening of the Possessed. So we get an interruption, we get hand advantage, and now we're getting more attack boost because we control a different uh, attributes with Awakening of the Possessed. This card is an absolute win-win. I absolutely adore it. Um, and we can banish it from the graveyard as well to uh, place a face-up uh, Possessed spell or trap besides itself from the graveyard. So... Very, very good, consistent piece, and just a very powerful card. I absolutely love what this does for the archetype. Two copies of Unpossessed. I initially had mixed feelings on this card, but I grew to love it. It does two things. The first thing is meh. Uh, if a Charmer or Familiar Possessed monster we attacks, I think it is just... Um, it's, sorry, it's uh, Charmer monsters we control can't be destroyed by battle. 
But if a familiar possessed monster we control attacks an opponent's monster, they gain 800 attack during damage calculation. So with our monsters already being beefy, unpossessed makes them even stronger. But that's not the reason I run this card. I run this card for the, uh, for the sole purpose that it runs in perfect unison with uh, Secret Village of the Spellcasters and uh, with our Awakening of the Possessed. So it does two things very, very well. The second effect of Unpossessed is if our monster is destroyed by a battle card effect, we can special summon a monster with 1500 defense from our deck, which is all of the familiar possessed monsters. So what that does, because we're not special summoning much, any kind of advantage where we can keep a monster on the uh, spellcaster on the board is crucial. So it allows us to also proc Awakening of the Possessed to uh, draw an additional card. Hand Advantage is always powerful. It's the reason why Possessed Partnerships is also a great card in unison with Awakening of the Possessed. But Secret Village of the Spellcasters. So if we don't control a spellcaster, this card doesn't do anything. It kind of actually actively locks us out of spells. But Unpossessed allows us to make sure we always have a spellcaster on the field. We want to try and lock our opponents out as much as possible. So just a very, very good card. Um, and this can we can also banish uh, Possessed Partnerships to you know, place Awakening of Possessed Face Up or Unpossessed Face Up if our opponent gets rid of either of these. So I really like Unpossessed for the reason that it keeps a Spellcaster on board. It allows us to draw a card potentially with Awakening of the Possessed and it keeps a Spellcaster on the board with Secret Village of the Spellcasters considering we don't Special Summon much. Dark Renewal is a very powerful card. Uh, any kind of non-destruction removal is pretty good. So we tribute uh, a spellcaster we control, send our opponent's monster they control to the graveyard when it's summoned, and then we special summon a dark spellcaster from the deck, which is always going to be Dark the Dark Charmer, uh, which is this one here. Um, and we can do it from the graveyard as well. So even if we don't have this in the deck, we can do it from the grave. Uh, very, very powerful cards. Uh, interruption, like I said, it's going first, and any kind of non-destruction removal is very powerful, especially if we're doing it during our opponent's turn. And I will also proc Awakening of the Possessed for an additional draw, which I just think it's, it's just great synergy. Who doesn't love synergy? Skill Drain, the bane of people's existence. I absolutely love Skill Drain. This got reprinted in the Dark World Structure deck, so it's absolutely obtainable. This <laughs> does wonders because besides Luna, every other monster in our main deck is a vanilla. We just get the attack boost, we use it to draw cards, we use the uh, attributes to pop cards with possessed partnerships. We don't care about skill drain. Luna's the only one in the main deck that, you know, searches something, but the search isn't that powerful with everything else we've got. Skill drain <laughs> locks everything down on the field. It's phenomenal. Um, this card single-handedly kind of made me feel like I have to run this as a go-first deck. Pop the skill drain, uh, we'll activate it, sorry, and uh, our opponent can't do anything. Uh, unless they, you know, have hand effects or or uh, graveyard effects, but on the field monster effects, they can't do anything. So very, very powerful. I advise running skill drain at three, at least for the build I'm going for, and then a play set of solemn strike. In my opinion, the best solemn, being able to negate a special summon or a monster effect, extremely powerful in a build where we're going first as often as we can with it. This is just a crucial card to have, and absolutely love it. Like I said, it's the best solemn in my opinion. Now for the extra deck, this is where you can have a bit of fun. Um, I'm just running every copy of the Charmer monsters. Um, obviously not one-offs. Uh, you can pretty much run a playset uh, of almost all of them. Uh, capped at 15, so you need to run one at two. But uh, depending on your matchup, if you want a side deck, or depending on how you want to go about it, if you prefer more over the others, just run a playset of them. Um, I'm pretty much running a playset of all of them, except a, a heater at two, for example. Um, you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, what is it? It's uh, the light one and the dark one are the two best because they're the most common uh, and tend to be the best archetypes to steal from the graveyard. If you're not familiar what these cards do, they can special summon an opponent's monster from their graveyard uh, matching their attributes. So if I summon Heater, I can special summon a fire monster from my opponent's graveyard. Uh, Alsa will do Earth, etc. So these two tend to be the best of the bunch. Uh, but because we're running it pure, because we've got a lot of space in the extra deck, we're not running, you know, Boral Sword and Appaloosa, things like that. We just want to have fun with it. And the reason why I run two Pot of Extravagance, because we don't care about these either. We doesn't matter if we banish them. 
the amount of times I've used these to close a game has been absolutely nil. They have uh, not mattered. They are pure pot of extravagance fodder. So have fun with it. Run whatever you want to run. I'm just running uh, play sets as much as I can with just heater it too because it doesn't matter at all. So that is my Familiar Possessed deck. I absolutely love this. It's immensely fun. It's seen many revisions. You guys have may have already seen a couple deck builds. It is pure for casually competitive uh, play. It does surprise people. They don't expect a go first Familiar Possessed with so many interruptions and consistency and floodgates. It's a very, very fun deck. I urge you guys to get experimental with these kind of builds. And this is a deck I don't feel like I'll ever move off. I absolutely adore it. So let us know if, if there's any cards which you think may help this deck going first. If it, you know, 1850 attack, 1500 defense, it being spellcaster. If there's anything niche that you feel like may help this deck, let me know. I will definitely look at tweaking this. I always take advice in the comments. And some of the decks I have, uh, they've gotten a little bit better because of the comments you guys have left. Um, I'm hoping I can spark some, I guess, originality and uh, creativity with the decks that you guys have, especially if you're going for a pure variant. So... That is me for today. Um, let me know what you guys would like to see in the future, and hopefully I can give you guys that. Peace.